There are so many unknowns when it comes to relocating to a new area. Of course, you've got to figure out what neighborhood you'll live in, how much it will cost, and how long your commute will be. But today's video isn't about that. Watch my video on the pros and cons of living in Fairfax County to learn more about those questions. Today I want to talk to you about these little known facts that you don't typically learn until you've lived somewhere for a little while. I've lived in Northern Virginia, specifically Fairfax County, since 2013. So I think I'm in a pretty good position to share with you what I've learned. But to make sure I didn't miss anything, I put out a few feelers. I posted the following question on social media. This video contains some things I thought of myself, a few I felt were no brainers, and a couple shared on social media that hadn't even crossed my mind. Actually, these two videos, this is only part one. You can find part two in my Where to Live in Fairfax County playlist. The link is up here to the right and in the description down below. After watching this video, series, you should feel comfortable relocating to Fairfax County with little to no surprises, or at least a few less than you would have without watching this video. Watching this video is like using a cheat code on a video game. Let's start the show. Hi, my name is Abraham Walker, your favorite Northern Virginia YouTube real estate agent. On this channel, I do the research so you don't have to. If you're thinking about moving or relocating anywhere in the Northern Virginia area, use the link in the description to fill out your perfect home questionnaire. After you complete the short survey, we'll meet virtually and you can ask me anything you want about Northern Virginia. Enough about me. What should you know about Fairfax County before you move here? First up, minutes don't equal miles. If you are moving from a smaller metropolitan area or even a small town, you may think five miles equals a five to seven minute drive. In Northern Virginia, that's laughable and not the funny type of laugh either. It has taken me over 20 minutes to drive seven miles and that that wasn't even during rush hour traffic. When you move here, you have to put that paper map away and use your GPS system to plan accordingly. Your GPS will be one of your greatest friends here. This brings me to my next point when choosing a home. Don't pick a house based on how close it is to your employer. People in South Lorton, west of Burke, and in Loudoun are known to tell little lies about their commute time. Take their advice with a grain of salt. No matter how many times they say it, they can't get to DC from their homes in 30 minutes or less. It's just not possible. What you want to do is research the commute time from an area to your desired destination. Because again, miles don't equal minutes. When conducting this research inside Google Maps, make sure you adjust the departure time to match when you'll actually be driving. You can live 15 miles away and get there quicker than someone that lives only five miles away. It all depends on your exact location and the traffic patterns in that area. Don't forget to consider if you'll be using public transportation or driving yourself. When you move to Fairfax County, you may notice something unique about our highways and interstate system. There's a road in the middle with people going faster than the rest of the traffic. That area is called the HOV lane. HOV stands for High Occupancy Vehicle. High Occupancy Vehicle lanes are one or more lanes of a roadway that have restrictions on use to encourage ride sharing and can reduce vehicle miles traveled. To access these lanes, you'll need an easy pass. Do yourself a favor now and purchase an easy pass as soon as you move to the area. You'll thank me later. Remember when I said that traffic here can be a bear? Well, the HOV lane could take some of the edge off traffic, but it comes at a cost. Buy an easy pass and keep it loaded to save yourself some time. Just be mindful of the toll rates when you travel because sometimes the tolls are in the double digit numbers. There are times that tolls can get up to $50 on 66. Another note, when it comes to planning your commute there are two morning rush hours. One early in the morning for the early risers. Think Pentagon and DOD employees. These individuals go to work early so that they can get off early. Sometimes they try to make it into the office around 5 a.m. and they get out around three o'clock or so. Then there's the regular morning rush hour you'd experience in any other major city. Again, get an easy pass, seriously. And if you don't, Make sure you set your navigation system to avoid 
toll roads. Or you might end up with a surprise ticket in the mail. One last comment about the Easy Pass before we move on to the next section. Upgrade your Easy Pass to the Flex Pass to access the HOV lanes when you don't meet the passenger requirements. When our entire family of four is on the road, we exclusively ride on the HOV lane for no fee with the HOV option selected on our Easy Pass. Another note about driving, rain will increase your commute time substantially. And snow, forget about it. Telework if you can, because even if you're good at driving in the snow, your neighbors aren't. And speaking of snow, despite what people say around here, we don't really get much of it. We get snowfall every year, but not a whole lot. And every few years, we get a really good snowstorm that will shut things down for a few days. If you're from up north, you'll think everyone is making a big deal about a few inches of snow. And if you're from the south, it will take you a few years to get used to a real winter. Another reason to keep your GPS handy is that there are several streets with the same name. No, I don't mean a street is really long and runs through several parts of an area. I mean some streets have the same name even though they are clear across town and don't even run in the same direction. Seriously. At the same time, a street name will sometimes change once you hit a particular cross street. For example, drive west down Duke Street in Alexandria and it will change to Little River Turnpike, then to Main Street. Next is Fairfax Boulevard, followed by Lee Jackson Memorial Highway, then to John S. Mosby Highway, and so on and so on. You get my point. Let's pause on the list for a quick minute. I want to know, have you ever lived in Fairfax County? If so, comment down below with Nova. Since you're watching this video, it's safe to assume you either live here now or you are planning to move to this area. I've made this video to answer some of the questions you may have about the area, but also so I can help you find your next home. If you plan to move soon, don't be shy. Reach out to me so I can help you find your next home. Use the link in the description to fill out your perfect home questionnaire. After you complete the short survey, we'll meet virtually and you can ask me anything you want about this area. Now back to our show. Do you pay annual personal property taxes on your personal vehicle where you currently live? If not, get ready to. Another surprise for many people moving to Fairfax County is Virginia's personal property taxes. In Virginia, you don't just pay taxes when you purchase a car. You get the opportunity to pay property taxes on it for as long as you own it. How much you pay will depend on which county you live in and is calculated based on its perceived value. That's something to keep in mind when you move here and if and when you decide to purchase a new car. Let's talk about homes. A starter home in Fairfax County could be anywhere from four to $600,000. It will be best if you got used to the idea of living in a townhouse if your budget is below 600,000. In that price range, townhouses outnumber single family homes in Fairfax County. Yeah, I know. If you haven't started actively looking for a home, you may be surprised by that. Who would have thought that spending a half a million dollars on a home would get you something that shares a wall with a neighbor? There's more sad news too. Your pantry and kitchen may be considered small too in comparison to what you can find in other parts of the country for the same price. That is if you even have a pantry. Many townhouses don't have eating kitchens, but virtually all houses have a dining room room. Personally, we live in a townhouse and my family uses our dining room every day of the year. We kind of don't have a choice because we don't have an eat-in kitchen. Living in a townhouse is nothing like my childhood home where the dining room was reserved for Sundays and special occasions. If your kitchen has room for a table, consider yourself lucky. Otherwise, get used to the idea of carrying plates and servingware to the dining room. Speaking of things that make homes here a little different, many homes in Northern Virginia don't have overhead lighting in all of the rooms. Yes, don't worry, I thought it was peculiar too. Kitchens and dining rooms have lighting, but that may not be the case in the bedrooms and living room. Over time, some owners have added recessed lighting and ceiling fans, but that's not always the case. What homes in Fairfax County typically include are major appliances, and that's true whether you are renting or buying. We've had clients relocate from other areas thinking they need to bring their own washer and dryer. That isn't usually the case here. So if you are leaving your 
your appliances at your last place, you may want to consider selling them before you get here. In Fairfax County, get used to seeing housekeepers or cleaning services in every neighborhood, regardless of price range. The work family balance here skews towards work. People here are always on the go. Whether it's because most adults work outside the home, the kids have busy after school schedules, I'll come back to that later, or because they've chosen a home with a long commute, many people don't have the time to clean their homes. Or should I say they have less free time and don't want to spend that time cleaning. So get a housekeeper and don't feel guilty about it. Many of your neighbors have one too. In fact, ask them for a recommendation. About those after school schedules. Some parents, not all, in Fairfax County treat raising kids like a competition. Now, I say this as a Fairfax County parent myself. Many of these kids here have every minute of their lives scheduled. They have an after school activity for every day of the week. They are on sports teams, take dance lessons, and at the same time, they are in scouts, play an instrument, all while working on a cure for cancer. I know some kids with rehearsal and practice four days a week and recitals and games on the weekends. Hey, it's not my cup of tea, but it's fairly common here. Lots of parents spend the little free time they have chauffeuring their kids to their various activities. So again, you see why so many people need a house. Another thing you should know is that camps and child care centers fill up quickly. You've got to plan ahead. Fairfax County Elementary schools have school-age child care programs called SAC. These programs are before and after school care. Slots are extremely limited and they fill quickly. So you need to mark your calendar and register as soon as you can. If you're unable to get in, you could be on the waiting list for months. My family moved here just before my oldest started kindergarten and we were on the waiting list for SAC the entire school year. Fortunately, there are many, and I do mean many, before and after school care facilities that do pick up and drop off at local public schools. Now, if you have young kids who aren't yet school age and they need child care, start looking now. Yes, right now. Like as soon as you finish this video, you should look into it. You know what? Don't finish the video. Stop right now. Sign up for child care. Many of the daycare centers have long waiting lists. The same year we were on the waiting list for SAC, for my oldest son, we were also on the waiting list for a handful of daycare centers for our youngest son. Top programs have fewer vacancies and you should plan accordingly. On the bright side of things, there are many licensed in-home daycare providers. Once you get settled, you can ask your neighbors or check out neighborhood online forums to find one. I particularly like Nextdoor and there are a couple Facebook groups. Send me a message if you would like to know which Facebook groups work out for the area that you're looking into. The rec centers in Fairfax County offer a bunch of different programs and you're pretty much guaranteed to find something that will pique your kid's interest. But you've got to make sure you know when they become available. Register your child for summer and winter camps as soon as registration opens. Many of them will fill up the same day. So there you have it. That's part one of the real stuff locals say about moving to Fairfax County. By watching this video, you are ahead of the game and now know several things you wouldn't have learned until you'd live here for at least a few months, couple of years, or never. Don't forget to check out our part two, which will be linked below in the description and located in the Where to Live in Fairfax County playlist. Let me know in the comments section what you wish you knew before moving here. If you want more information about Fairfax County, make sure you reach out to me. Click the link in the description to complete your perfect home questionnaire. After you complete the short survey, we will meet virtually and you can ask me anything you want about Northern Virginia. Seriously, complete the survey to start the process. Check out my other videos about relocating to Fairfax County right here. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.